There you go. Yeah, the level's good. What were we about mm. to say about year five? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm sitting here uh, with Chris Ryan, who's a comedian uh, based in Canberra. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about all manner of things. I don't want to spoil it for you, Chris, who's sitting right here with me. Yeah. But, um, you know, it shall unfold. The reason I'm talking to Chris, other than the fact that Chris is fantastic, is because Chris is bringing, again, to the Canberra Theatre Centre a show for the Canberra Comedy Festival. And are you performing as part of the gala? I don't think that is um, anything that anyone's talking about at this stage. Great. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was trying to talk about it, but I see the full, full kibosh, full censorship in the true spirit of comedy. The Canberra Comedy Festival is coming to the Canberra Theatre Centre. It's an annual staple, lots of fun. Um, tickets will be up online. You'll be able to find out all about that in due course. It's this, the back half of March. In the meantime, you're on 30 Minute Call. I'm Chris Andry. I'm talking to Chris Ryan. Chris, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, since March 2012. Oh, wow, March. Yes. You remember it so well? Well, because it was raw comedy, you uh-huh. know, and that's when it's held. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it's been like, what, seven and a bit years? Yeah. What, do you remember your first jokes still? Do, do you still use any of them? I do, actually. There's one that I do use. Oh, there's a couple I do use mm-hmm. still, um, largely about how, you know, I'm kind of, um, I think the world is full of dickheads. Yeah, right. Um, and I get them to look to the left and right and <laughs> if they look all right, it's probably you, you know, that kind yeah, of one. That's, that's kind great. of a nice little opener and it lets people know that, you know, I think everyone's flawed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful premise. Um, were you nervous before going into it? Yeah, I was very nervous. I, I wasn't sure about what stand-up comedy was mm-hmm. and I certainly hadn't seen enough to – you know how some people are nerdy about comedy yeah, and they I watch do. it since they're children and stuff? I didn't do that. Um, and uh, Why did you sign up to do it? Because I kind of had an inkling that uh, it would be lots of fun and because mm. I've always loved making people laugh and it didn't seem that hard, mm. you know. Um, and I, was, I enjoyed the stage and I'd had a long time off the stage and out of the spotlight and in my invisible years, I think, as, as a young mum. Mm. Um, and so I just decided it was time to have a crack, you know, and see if I c- could do it. And it turns out it was all right. Yeah, obviously. Um those, I want to get into those invisible years because uh, I think that's something that's glossed over. Young mum mm. is isolating. Oh, totally. And, yeah. and I was having kids when none of my friends were. Yeah, right. And so I didn't have any real mates. I had like a couple of acquaintances that I vaguely knew and I tried to, you know, latch on to. But it's not, it's not the same as going through stuff together like you do with your friends in life. Mm. Usually, you know, you go through things like, I don't know, education if you do that. And then Rites perhaps, yeah, like, you know, share house living and then, you know, travel and, and maybe getting a job and things First like divorce. that. First <laughs> divorce. Yeah. But, um, you know, kids, yeah, if you don't have your mates with you for that, you start to feel kind of strange. What were you doing on stage before that? Um, oh, I used to sing in a cover band down Did the you? south coast, yeah, and then here in Canberra for a bit, you know, late nights at the at the pub, singing right. till two a.m. I, I found because I I, I, start, I did comedy for a brief while as well, and I started doing raw comedy, and I was a bit nervous before it. But I found that once I got on stage, because I'd done so much singing beforehand, yeah. I was like, oh, this is just the same as that. Of course it is. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I felel the same. Like yeah. it was quite comfortable, and I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Comedy is a more intensive sort of. Um, uh, scrutiny, but also like attention gain. Did you find that like, because I mean, it's, maybe it's a very facile reading of it, but it sounds like, you know, you, you were in the public performing, doing these things, and then you had this isolating period. Mm. Did it sort of build up through that period where you're like, I'm going to do something on stage. I have to do something. Yes, it did. It became a bit of a hunger. Yeah, right. Um, and I think it really helped me, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, it got me through some pretty tough years and, um, and, and then – allowed me to see myself anew, you know, which is a lovely gift if you can do that in your life several times, you know. Mm. Um, so I, I started to sort of think, oh, well, life's pretty exciting. You know, I mean, it's great having kids and all. Like, don't <laughs> yeah, get me wrong. Yeah. But it's hard, you know, and, yeah, and that's yeah. very um, – it, Kids it is, are dumb as well, you know. No, my kids aren't, but um, that I, I'm a proud mum. Yeah. That's my little moment uh, of <laughs> pride. Um, but uh, – it's all behind closed doors being a parent, you know. Yeah. There's no – like you don't get accolades. Mm-hmm. There's no accolades. What you, the there is accol- punishment though. The accolade is basically your children have survived yeah. and think you're okay. Yeah. 
and are doing okay. That's the that's the I best. I don't even you know can. how common that is. Well, I don't think it's yeah. I think it's quite rare. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, given we have no training for it, you know, it's it's quite a big expectation. <laughs> we talk about um, comedy saving. Sorry, saving is probably maybe too strong, but what, you know, being a transformative experience mm. for you through that period. Do you mean um, just by virtue of having something where you're continuously performing and, and you know, being in public or, or do you mean the actual content itself of your shows, like as a way of exploring stuff? I think at the start I, it was merely the fact of being on stage and then being around people who thought in a similar, not in a similar way, but like who behaved in, you know, who took their lives and then turned them into stories and then told them to people on stage and mm-hmm. just meeting people from all walks of life and different ages um, who did that and thought that that was normal mm. was kind of encouraging. You know, I thought, oh, wow, that, this is a thing that people do. How great. We can talk about our, the worst things that happen to us and make them funny. And isn't that great? You do you know? find that that is something that is always the case? I it's love the, it. People talking about the worst things that happen well, to Well, I mean, people do it differently. But I, I f- certainly think there is a, a large element mm-hmm. of, of mocking um, what happens in life on stage. Um, and I love that, you know. And it, it, even when I'm going through difficult things or annoying things in life – there is a small part of my brain going, it's going to be fine because this is a bit... Yeah, right. You know? Right. Truly, I do think that's a relief. It's a little escape valve, yeah. you know, of pressure. Yeah, right. Um, and, and also knowing, and especially if it's unjust, you know, or if, if yeah. I think it's unjust, um, I think, oh, well, you know, then you get all bullshit about it, in, you know, just for a little moment in your mind. You think, well, I can speak for the unspoken. Yeah. You know, and you yeah, get yeah, this yeah. big ridiculous ego about it. But, um, you know, there is a chance to make fun of... You know those in charge that aren't doing a good job. Not that I do politics, but you know everything is political. Everything the is, yes, is political, etc. Mm. Um, I um found that that was something that I didn't like about comedy for myself. Like mm-hmm. I found that that sort of bit where you talk about you know you have that bad experience or you have that um you know this is so unjust and so ridiculous and and you get that valve to feel good about it. I found that I didn't want to be incentivizing those sorts of interactions in my life because I because because I think you really do you know there's such there's such a compelling mine of of things in, and I just like oh no I don't want to be I don't want to go out of my way to be like oh, but indignant don't. about things well I know but this is the risk for me you know yeah. I mean everyone's different yeah. I, I just uh, yeah do, do you find that you get on with other comedians generally Oh, I think so. I, yeah. I like to think so. I guess you'd have to ask them. No, um, no, no. I, do you like them? Is my I question. I do. Yeah, I, I do. Um, <laughs> I, I like, I like hearing what they're up to. I mean, there, you know, there's obviously always going to be people that you don't really, you know, connect with. Of course. In this world, but um, largely, I am delighted to see old friends from comedy and new, and meet new friends in comedy. It's exciting, and um, I. Th- I love seeing what they do, and and we all have different views, and mm-hmm. um, so obviously it's different stories from different walks of life. I know this is not this is a bit of a messy handle, but do you consider yourself to be introverted or extroverted? I'd say I'm pretty extroverted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'd certainly think there's no doubt. I don't. I don't know. I, what would you say I am? I, I don't know. Like it's one of those things that's hard to read, yeah. but um, it's just funny because um, there's a study that I read that looked at um characteristics of psychopathy i mean like you know, oh you've god got to take here these we things go grains of salt but <laughs> but there were um there were four i think i think um comedians and actors like shared like you know some outlier traits and and you know like uh thinking that you're better than other people better than authority um uh what were they intelligence um and there were a couple others, but the difference between actors and comedians was actors extroverted and comedians are introverted. Right. But, I mean, like, you know, there's, there's, you can find a study for anything, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. I, um, oh, look, I think there's probably elements of me that could be psychopathic at times. Yeah, um, anyone, You know, right. like I, I probably uh, get very self-centred and um, selfish and egotistical probably at times, but... Um, that's probably – I'm learning to love all of me, Chris Endry, at the age of 46. <laughs> uh, so that's just a little element of me. I think there's a lot of good things as well. Um, but I, I definitely don't think I'm better than um, many people. <laughs> Not all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got to have a few. You've got to, you've got to have your chosen few that no, you're just certain. the evil ones, <laughs> yeah, you know. But um, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm better than authority either, to be honest. Yeah, right. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to be in authority. And mm. I, that's why I rarely – uh, speak my mind to be honest and I'm mm. working on bits on this actually because 
Speaking your mind in what sense? Oh, in, in any sense. Like I don't. Because comedy don't, is like a, an apex is. of speaking your mind in, I know. in some way. But I found it was like a way to mask actually saying things. Yes. Yeah. I don't. Um, because I don't feel learned. Like I know that you're like some kind of super genius. No. Um, you are though. People say so. Um, yeah, and- but people were never wrong about anything, were they, Chris? <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like you've got that clever brain and I'm sure you understand things at levels that I don't even look at or know exist. But I knew you um, were going to say that, for example. <laughs> but um, I, so I don't I'm, – I'm terrified of ever getting into some serious debate, you know, about climate change or yeah. anything because I don't know anything. Yeah, but you nobody know? does. That's yeah, but beauty. people seem to. No, or, or, no people it's claim confidence. to. Yeah, people it's claim confidence. To. I love some of your jokes around this sort of stuff. I mean, maybe you don't even see them as being around that, but the – um, what was your one about wanting to work for the UN? Oh, god! I love that line. Oh, man. I think about it a lot, actually. I, Can you repeat it just for I, our audience? Well, I don't even know. if It's it's a large bit. I'm not even sure it's a punchline. It, it, it's just truth, Chris. A lot of my stuff is truth. Yeah, but you're like, I love to work. So, so you dream of working for the UN? Well, yeah. I'd love to – because it, it doesn't was, matter or something. I was trying <laughs> – oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, oh, well, it was, it was a What's bit – What's the line? It was a bit about wanting to escape the drudgery of being a postnatally depressed mother yeah. at home with two babies that couldn't speak English. And um, – <laughs> And, and it was just basically having cockamamie schemes of disappearing into a new life, of, yeah. of things that I wasn't – because I wasn't qualified to be a mum, so why not find something I was not qualified for <laughs> yeah. that would be better paid, yeah. such as working for the UN. So yeah. I went for this internship at Copenhagen, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, with, with like a three-month-old and an 18-month-old. and it. And um, it was going to be like um, unpaid – you know, mm-hmm. or just basic wage and no place to live. And my partner still reminds me of it and goes, do you remember that time you wanted to work for the UN? And yeah. I think the line was basically, <laughs> um, I mean, this is perfect. Oh, you know, why do you want the job, Ms Ryan? Oh, well, it's UN. I can do nothing and no one will know, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, something like that. But that, but that's, I don't know anything further than that. You know, I've got nothing to back that up. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I know the, the UN do some work. I know that. I, well, I mean, they must. <laughs> Um, another one I love uh, came to my mind before when you were talking um, about you know being a, a bigger person and learning to love or whatever it was. Um, <laughs> it was the line where you talk about this passive aggressive Jeff? Gr- Jeff, yeah, yes. passive aggressive Jeff, and everyone's so scared of passive aggressive Jeff. Yes, but you don't care because you're aggressive. Well, that's right. I love that it's so much. Th- there, the world is divided. In, yeah, in, yeah, into yeah, two yeah. groups. I'm absolutely in the school that's terrified of. The passive aggressive. Oh, are chef. you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I get, I get really annoyed <laughs> by passive aggressive people, and I mean, oh, of course, yes, yeah. and, and and I, I did actually call out his name wasn't Jeff. I had to change it to protect the innocent. Mm. But um, what was his real name? Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. I've changed it for so long, I can't remember what yeah, his real right, name was. Right, right. Um, but yeah, it, it is a thing that happens in life. You get confronted by people who just say in a very sort of mild tone. Would, do you have do you have to sit there or something like that and, <laughs> yeah. and it's like well yeah I'm gonna sit here yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sorry, what are you gonna uh, are you gonna smash me what are you gonna do cry <laughs> like I don't understand what I'm supposed to be afraid of <laughs> uh, that's great why are you, why are you so strong oh I'm not that strong I think um it's a, a f- facade <laughs> it's oh, a right. facade um I don't know um a rage and shame cycle. I'm not sure. Mm. Um, quite possibly. Uh, there's moments where my personality gets very large um, and bolshy and then other times where, yeah, I need heaps of approval and I don't feel worthy. Mm. So I don't know. There's nothing in a straight line in my life. You know, nothing is consistent. It's always ups and downs and cycles and I think that's largely the, the case for most people. You're not well, one person all the time. I think you have elements of different things going on. I'd agree with that, but I think it like it seems immediately obvious that what you've described is pretty compatible with a you know, a good output as a comedian. <laughs> and like and you know, because if you if you like go through periods where you're desperate for attention and you're like, oh well this is great. I've got a run of shows. This is mm, this is gonna yeah, feel good yeah. and I'm gonna do well within it because I'm incentivized to want to. But also, um, you know, if, if you if you perhaps reach a bit too far and then have a bit of a, a collapse, you know, that's also good because you get the introspection where you're like Thinking about different things and oh, then trying yeah. to process it by coming up with what's funny. But do you do you do you find that that's um, transformative in a good way? I th- I don't know quite. I'm not sure I know how to answer that. Um, I do know that I take a lot of time to reflect and I think a lot. There will be times mm-hmm. I wake up in the night and think a lot. Um, th- think on behaviour, my behaviour, on ideas, um, 
on why I feel the way I do. Uh, you know, this is all just normal human behaviour, I mean, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Uh, maybe there's some people who go through life without thinking too much and I quite envy them. Honestly, I do. Um, mm. I, don't, I would love not to think so much. I do overthink um, and I'm not sure that it helps the cause. Like, I'm not sure that it gets me to where I need to go, but I'm not quite sure how to stop doing it either. I wonder, I wonder if there are people who don't think all that much, they just carry on. Yeah, well, you know, people who just um, keep it simple, and mm. I do. I I like. I would like to live by that rule. Mm. Um, it's a bit hard in modern life. I feel. I feel like it's easy to keep it simple if you're going out there. You're like rowing to a location, dropping well, a yeah. net, pulling in some fish. You know, then yeah. you've, you're, you know, your or immediate concerns a, are in front of you. But but that's doesn't or really going seem to a job. You know, if yeah. you just commit and say, "Look, I'm going to go to a job that I'm mildly dispassionate about," mm. and I will. Pay off, pay off a mortgage that is uh, neither here nor there in my life, like in and live in a house that I. It's okay, you know. Like there are heaps of people that have aspire to that, and that is a great thing, you know. Um, and I'm not mocking that. I'm just saying it. I find that hard um, to keep, resonate with to you. motivate. Yeah, that wouldn't. I find that hard to keep motivated about kids. Having kids is a is a great motivator because you think, oh well, we need to feed the children. Um, yeah, we we really must, <laughs> we must one of these days <laughs> get round to that. <laughs> that said, their complaints are getting quieter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, right. So that's not the motivator, and so you've got this external system. Do do you, do you work a a a, day, a a quote unquote day job? Last October, I stopped. Working for myself. I worked for so, myself so for 20 years. That's, doing that's 13 months ago now. Is oh, that, yeah, I guess. Right? I guess so, yeah. Or 15 months ago. Happy anniversary. Thank you so much. Um, and I have until next June. Mm-hmm. Um, I've Well, I've set myself that deadline and my partner and I have talked about it. And we'll have a look at how my finances are looking. Because mm-hmm. currently, as an artist, you would understand this, Chris Hendry, uh, I'm not, You're rich. I'm not uh, contributing greatly to the economics of the household. Yeah, um, sure. And that is unsustainable. Uh, short, medium, and long term. Yeah. So I need to sit down at that point after a big load of festivals next year mm-hmm. and just take stock and see what the direction is. Where's the trajectory? Uh, do I just need to suck it up and take a, te- a dreadful job that I'm going to hate for three months just so we can get by? Um, but this is the difficult thing with arts careers. I mean, it's you know much talked about, that no money for almost everybody. But the people that do, like, you know, if... You, you're not so far off the rungs where you're suddenly looking at oh it's, you know there's an easy hundred grand a year for you just oh, in doing shows. It I feels mean, like, like a long. It way feels off. like a long way because there's you know ten thousand people on you know one rung and then the next rung is only a hundred. But yeah. but it, but it still it still does exist and and I I find it really interesting because when I gave up comedy the the peop, the peers that I admired the most were on that rung and. Um, they also wanted to give up comedy, but they couldn't mm. because – well, I mean, not they couldn't, but, like, as if they're going to make that decision when they're, you know, like, the, you know, these, yeah, these people are around 40, you know, they, they've, they, their skill is chatting and being wry, you know. <laughs> they're not going to get – there's no marketplace in which they're going to get that easy money for that type of work. So they have to keep doing it, which is kind of like, you know, we never think of that step as being potentially a problem as well. But mm. it's, I think it's just hard with – I I think like anything you really want to know why you're doing something but you've been you've been doing comedy for years and are definitely on a, 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 a you know maybe it's hard to feel day to day but you're still on Oh a, it's an exciting a, time exhilarating I, trajectory I, f- I think I feel like it's um there is something going on. It's so do, funny. I mean, that, that, I think, that really, you, that thanks, really helps that's in very comedy, nice. Chris. It's, well, you know, <laughs> that's the aim. Um, yeah. it, it feels like there's momentum happening now yeah. and I'm really excited by that and that you know, it's been a big year and I think next year will be even bigger and, you know, there's been a lot of travel, for work mm. travel, comedy travel. Um, so it's it, – I can see the evidence that there's some changes going on and I like where it's going. Um, and I, Well, yeah. I should – I mean, our audience won't necessarily know but you got you picked up a gong, the best newcomer at the Sydney. Sydney Comedy Festival this year. So that that's – that's that's It was very exciting. What an accolade. It was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. It was surreal. Yeah. I, I was so freaked out by that that I walked home. Uh, I was staying in Sydney on a friend's couch in Coogee mm-hmm. and I walked home from... The glamorous en- show business life. Enmore with yep. a big backpack with my spare <laughs> pair of shoes, the award, a big bag of makeup and just my phone and I just listened to the three sets I'd done that night and then I listened to Jose Gonzalez and I listened yep. to a podcast ah. and I just walked all across Sydney um, 
just to process. That's so nice. Yeah, it was kind what of a nice little ritual. It was really weird and nice. Yeah. I know I've never done anything like it, and probably won't again. Yeah. Well, you never know. Like yeah. maybe maybe that's your thing from now on. Long, mm. long walks <laughs> in the middle of the night. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Weird. I, yeah, it's weird because you don't get um, a chance to g- get those sorts of things very often in your life, and it feels m- kind of big, you know. At yeah, the time. it is, and it's much nicer when you don't expect to get something like totally. that as, as well. I mean, it's not like there, you know, mm. it's not like there aren't a bunch of great new comedians. I know. At the There's comedy always heaps, every year. and yeah. also the the whole idea. I mean, raw comedy, for example, it's mm-hmm. a competition, right? And the idea of making the arts a competition, I hate. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. that that's it's so disheartening for so many. And I've been yeah. on. We've all been on the other side of things like that. And uh, yeah, it's nice to so feel like a dud of, just because your subjective works are not, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, received by subjective yeah, exactly. judges. Yeah, exactly. I know. So it's you know it's great, but it also I take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. And I just keep working. Yeah, great. Um, what other, what what is the work? load in that period because you, you said you've given yourself till mid next year is that right yeah so so what, what does that look like well, materially so what's happening is i'm putting together a, a very a, a new show but it'll have some of the best ofs over the years mm-hmm. so that i have my best chance at presenting my best possible show at this time to mm-hmm. melbourne next year so mm-hmm. i'm doing my right f- so is it is it all because melbourne comedy festival not not all listeners will necessarily know is the the apex of, yeah. of the australian comedy Scene and so you know to, you want to sort of sharpen everything up so that in the run by the time you get to April, yeah, um, it's you've got your best material. That's right. Mm-hmm. And so I'm uh, doing my first ever solo run. It's doing twenty two shows, which is a big deal for me. Um, so because when you do your first solo, you hope that you're in the running for you know newcomer or at least being seen by the judges or mm. you know recognised as trying to get up there and be become a, a new face on the scene. Um, so uh, I've got I've got. Brisbane, um, Canberra, Melbourne, Perth and Sydney next year. And I've only ever done like one or two festivals before, so five is a big deal. Yeah. And it's um, being produced by a, 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 an organisation I really like working with called Century and um, I wouldn't be able to do it if they weren't supporting me to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's what really does the support mean they do the booking? They're producing, and produce, yeah. Oh, produ- so, so, so does that – like working on um, the show? Or? Not so much – I mean, they have helped me to do a trial show in Sydney mm-hmm. to a you know an audience that they can pull together um, from their databases and so forth. But um, uh, yeah, it's it's financial support and um, right. you know marketing support, like sort of you know graphic design support and so mm-hmm. forth. And plus, they've got a database, so hopefully they can tell people to come to my show. But um, that's really exciting. It is exciting. Next it's really feels exciting. like next level. It feels like well, it's exciting because I wouldn't, I just wouldn't be doing this without them. So it's yep. kind of good. Um, so yeah, I'm putting together a, a new narrative and a new show with some good old bits in it, but um, so lots of new as well. And when's uh, the first time you'll be performing it? Uh, so I started last week with a like 35 minute trial show in Sydney um, with some of the bits, but the the first time I'll properly roll it out will probably be uh, like in Jan- late January up in Sydney again mm-hmm. for another trial, and then I'm going to Yass actually to because yeah, right. we try not to. Um, sort of waste our Canberra audience um, on trial shows. Mm-hmm. Um, we go outside of a 100k radius sort of thing. So I'm going up almost. to the, well, almost, yeah, to the Tootsie Gallery in Yass to roll out that for the first time uh, in oh, February, I'll, early I'll February. have to tell everyone in Canberra to <laughs> make the trip. It's <laughs> no, not that don't. far, 40 minutes. <laughs> no, tell them not to. Um, so, yes, people um, are very welcome but uh, and surrounds, but uh, mm-hmm. not Canberra people. And then, um, yeah, then the first time it'll be run in will be at the Brisbane Comedy Festival. So and then Canberra, then Melbourne. Um, what's the name of the show? It's called "I Thought It Would Be Nice," mm. and that's a saying my mum uses to cover up really bad ideas. Oh, yeah, she's always used it. Yeah. Can you give us a glimmer? Oh, like a glimpse. Last Christmas, my mum pulled out the Easy Buy catalogue and um, just pointed to this long pink flowing dress and just said, "What if I buy one for you, one for me, one for Eve, who's my fourteen-year-old daughter, and we all wear it at Christmas?" <laughs> And I, I said, why would we do that? So we look like we're in a cult? That's just weird. And she went, well, I thought it would be nice. <laughs> um, Mum's really about appearances, you know. It's important to look good and it, and matching is always good in a photo. She loves uh-huh. that, loves a matching photo. It harks back to her childhood. 
Um, she had two sisters and they were always dressed in the same like curtains that were sewn into dresses by her na- her oh, mum. Amazing. You know, so so yeah, it's kind of this like... Will the show be in the pink dress? Do you finally, <laughs> do you finally get a version? I've thought about this. Um, do you we, bring your mum onto stage? Uh, well, you are acting as a director <laughs> at yeah. this stage. Yeah, these are demands, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't sorted it out yet, but um, there'll be a few... Fun bits, I'm sure. Well, hopefully. Goodness. Yes, one would hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an hour, It is it? an yeah. hour show. A couple laughs, yeah. yeah but yeah, mostly just rigorous yes, engineering. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll fly through the air for yeah. most of the show. No. Yeah, That's so pretty it's... Funny. Yeah, it would be good. <laughs> too, too expensive. Um, so, yeah, that's what it's called. And um, I've been finding that, um, you know... I, I guess if I had to narrow down my audience, it would probably be women mainly, but there's also mm. lots of men that come. But I would say if I'm speaking to anyone, it's probably women between the ages of 30 and 55 to 60. Yeah, right. And um, they are my people and I love pl- I love playing to them. Great. Potentially an underserviced audience in the comedy world as well, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Well, certainly if you look at who's getting signed um, for mm. management in big agencies in Australia, it, there are a lot of young people get signed. Mm. Um, a lot of... A lot of young people. <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah, just yeah. going to say a lot of young people. And I think the theory is that they think if oh, we get them before they're famous or before you know, they've got their own style or whatever, we can mould them. Or I don't even know what they're thinking, but I just think – do you have a look at the audience? Yeah, and, Who's and how to many? Shows? Yeah, there's yeah. heaps of older ladies like me out there watching and buying tickets to comedy, um, and I definitely, definitely speak to them. You know, I think it might be more of a, f- a function of, um, you know, what we were talking about earlier. It's it's risky to have an arts career, and especially one like comedy, where f- for a couple of years you know you're going to be, you know, making very little money, and so and that's not a risk that you know many people can. Have the capacity to take. No, you know that's no. That, that's a you know. no. It's not. And if you're I mean, eighteen, it's much easier than if you've got the mortgage and the kids. Maybe. I mean, I'm in a privileged position. I accept that. I'm a you know. Yeah, e- you're educated. taking the sacrifices to do it as well. Yeah, my partner um, makes it. He enables me. So. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, which is really great. Do you have like a sort of Pre- multi amorous pre- deal? Like, you know, <laughs> it, 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 is it, is your partner looking to take on extra uh, <laughs> artists? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's hard enough affording this one, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, but that's why we got the deadline of June and we'll see how we go. But, um, yeah, it's. Be, I mean, I couldn't do it without the support of my family. There's yeah. no doubt. Um, and, you know, maybe it's – I'm sure it's hard for young people to – because they're trying to make their way in the world as well and it's hard to afford rent and all of those mm-hmm. things. So, you know, uh, it's hard for everyone but I just want to see – I just want to see, um, I just see uh, you know – my demographic get represented, and I'm very happy to take up that uh, that Guernsey if it's available. Yeah, great. Mm. Um, do you have any broader thoughts about, like, you know, where you think about your audience? Do, do, do you think it's important for people people to have access to comedy that shares their experience? Oh, I, I mainly, yeah. I mean, I, I like seeing a lot of different kinds of comedy, and I don't mind if it doesn't relate to my mm-hmm. world, but I particularly enjoy seeing new styles and different ways of telling a joke you know um but if if you're not a comedy nerd or like even vaguely interested in comedy yeah you want someone that's speaking to you Mm -hmm. uh, that understands your life respects your experience and you know like puts it back out to you in a different way so that you're you're able to see your own life in a different way and laugh maybe um do you get any have you gotten any feedback from your audiences that surprised you oh very much oh um that surprised me not so much. I mean, um, I did get a very insistent woman, at th- two women at the comedy store in Sydney a while ago. They were determined that I was uh, a lesbian. Oh, and, right. um, like, I am very happy, like, whether I'm regarded that way or not. Um, I happen not to be, but it was that was surprising. I mean, you know, because I talk very openly about my partner, you know, and he, him being a male and all of this stuff. And, and I they guess took it upon themselves. They, like, and they were we've determined. Got to, we've got to sort this person They were out. very determined they that, I, that I was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So I have to do I, – I made a joke about it uh, so that so that we could clear that up before <laughs> anyone approached me again and just <laughs> wasted everyone's time. Um, uh, no, apart from that, like, it's mainly feedback that I'm really happy about and hope for, like, you know – Oh, that's exactly what's going on in my life, oh, that's or so nice. you know that kind of stuff. I did a interesting little gig. Um, a woman invited me to her home, and there was about twenty five women about my age, mm-hmm. all mums of kids and stuff at school, and um, they they just got me to do a house party um, for a ladies' night, 
And that was the best fun. There was no, like, tech. There was no, like, mm-hmm. m- lighting or sound. I just sat, stood there and talked to them while they sat in the lounge room. And it was the best fun. Yeah. And so that is my audience, you know. And and I don't mind how I reach them. If it has to be in their lounge rooms, they can book me direct <laughs> through my website. Yeah, great. I've started that up. Have you? Yeah. Yep. Oh, well, how, do we, how do we find you to get onto that? Oh, chrisryancomedy.com. Yep, and how much will it cost you to, uh, to get to come and look, it's, tell it's, some jokes in the living room? It's variable, but like, I don't know, about 300 bucks for up to oh, tw- 25 people. That's crazy. Yeah. And more if there's more people. Yeah, okay, yeah. But that's not the same as a corporate gig. A corporate gig, I would like to charge $1 million. Yeah, great. I mean, yeah. that's fair. It's, <laughs> corporations have a lot of money. Whoa, gee, what was that cackle? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I wish. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. You do corporate gigs, though. I do, and some of them are fine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find – I found that the more you get paid for a gig, inevitably the worse it is, like the weirder it is or like the, the less receptive people oh, are. Oh, it's and a – it is – you know, I can, the only way I can summarise it is this. There was a time I was putting on my face for a corporate gig, mm-hmm. like I was doing the makeup, and I so much, so much didn't want to go and I knew all of the reasons why it would suck and I was putting on my makeup and I was praying for a catastrophic event. <laughs> Seriously, that's I didn't a, that's want. Healthy. That's I didn't healthy. want heaps of people to die. Just enough, yeah, you yeah, know, just, so just that me. I did. That's all. Is that, is that so much to ask? <laughs> or just like a large earthquake around my house, <laughs> so I can't leave it. You know, uh. um, that's how much sometimes I don't want to do a corporate gig. But other times, you know, when I get there, or even in advance, you can know it'll work. It's it's very simple, but and yet the mistakes get made over and over again. Yeah, I, I, the thing I found was so funny with corporate gigs is like how often people will book them. For audiences that don't want it at all, I know, and like, and, the, and you won't even get like a microphone or something, and oh. so suddenly you're just standing in a or corner. Or they're still serving food while you're speaking, yeah. or, or they've or they've changed it and no one can see you, <laughs> or you know, or yeah. the audio is so bad. I don't know. There's lots of lots of things that can go wrong, but when they're good, it it it's even more rewarding because it's like Cause against all odds we have survived <laughs> this, you know, together. Well done, you know. Yeah, great. Mm. Sorry, where do we find you for bookings again? Oh, chrisryancomedy.com. Okay, excellent. Well, I'm super excited and I cannot wait to see the show in the Comedy Festival. Do you have a date yet? Yeah. Or a runner date, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I think it's the Friday the 20th and Saturday the 21st of March. Of March, At the Courtyard Theatre right here, Chris. Yep, you can get your tickets, canberratheatrecentre.com.au. Can't wait to see it. Thanks so much for taking time with us, Chris. Thanks, Chris.